Well, welcome to the National Songbook of Israel. Uh, we are studying the Psalms, and we'll be looking at Psalm 34 today. Um, this one's entitled, A Taste of God's Goodness. As we go through these Psalms, um, they are not sermon length. Um, I just uh, do them to whet your appetite, to give you some insight from the Hebrew language, perhaps. We look at some of the words, and we look at background, and uh, just want to give you, in this case, a taste of, of God's goodness from his word to see that. And it might just challenge you to dig a little bit deeper in scripture and maybe even this psalm itself. If you have been following with me, all of my psalms have carried this outline in the front just so that you can see and be aware of our breakdown in the Hebrew Bible. They have five books that make up the Psalms, and this is their breakout, and they reflect the first five books of the Bible and the Hebrew theme of those books. So you can see we're still in book number one, um, which is beginnings. It's about man, and today it's about man in some way. In fact, man just tasting and seeing and experiencing the goodness of God. So it's written by David. It's in the prescript. If you open up your Bibles, you'll see it says that, a Psalm of David. But it gives us an explanation that is not usually there of exactly why this Psalm was written. When he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. So this is early in David's adult life. It fits in chronically, chronologically around 1 Samuel 21, verse 15. Uh, that's the story of Abimelech um, and David uh, trying just to get away from the Philistines. Abimelech gets him, but David actually um, pretends to be mad, and Abimelech just lets him go, and shrugs his shoulders and say, he's a crazy man, let him be. And so here's the back story, and I'll read a little bit of what I just said to you. David has been fleeing Saul and his army. At the midsection of chapter 21, we find David trying to hide among the Philistines at Gath, one of their stronghold cities. They did not want him and uh, were ready to kill him, but he became insane. Uh, the Bible says he changed his behavior. He acted like a crazy person. And the Philistines bought it. So David, uh, they just left him be, and David would live another day. Uh, David running, this is the 33 years of his actual reign on the throne in Jerusalem, and this is a little bit before that, it dates before that. This is also the second alphabetic psalm. Um, in the verses that we have, each one would start like we would have verse 1a, verse 2 starts with the letter b, verse 3c. Um, this has the same thing. Um, it's set up as Aleph, and that's the first, and it ends with Omega. And they go in consecutive numbers right through each of the verses, and so that's why it's called an alphabetic psalm. Remember, this is poetry. These are lyrics to songs. There's, the Lord has given a lot of creativity that have gone into these. And so uh, the, this is a list of all the alphabetic psalms. If you want to just study them, um, there they are. And we've already seen the first one in chapter 25 and the second one in, in, verses, in uh, chapter 34 or Psalm 34. Okay, Psalm 34 and 99 accompany the procession for taking the Torah out for public reading. That goes on right now in, in Judaism uh, when they go, to, uh, they go to the temple and to uh, go to the services. This is how they, this is one of the two of the, actually two of the Psalms and, and the third one, 29, is all about when they take the Torah out of their storage area and the procession to, to what we would call the pulpit and the opening up on the table actually and reading it. 
And then when they returned it, Psalm 29 would be sung. All of these psalms have songs that are sung today. Here's a great verse to memorize, and I would probably say it's the hub of the entire psalm. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Great verse to have. And here's our outline. It's all about tasting and seeing about the goodness of the Lord in these many different areas. In fact, there's seven of them. So we want to jump in right now and uh, move right into this. So the first thing we need is just taste and see the goodness of praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise or his song of praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, this is one of the, the weapons that a child of God has to fight Satan and the devices of Satan and his, and his minions and discouragement and despair is to sing praises to the Lord. Sing, sing songs out of the songbook. Sing choruses that you've learned. Sing to the Lord. Sing songs to the Lord. Praise God verbally. Don't be afraid to, sh to shout to the Lord in rejoicing. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble, which is the meek or the poor, shall hear thereof and be glad. And so this can be a blessing to those that perhaps need it the most, the, the, the humble, the people that are meek, the people that are actually poor uh, in spirit or poor financially, but they are, they are humble they are, we would look at them and they themselves appear to be low in society. But when they sing praises unto the Lord, they're the wealthiest people on the planet. So taste and see the goodness of partnership. The Lord, David, brings this in and says, oh, magnify. Uh, magnify means become great or just take, make it, make it big. Uh, make the Lord big. And it says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. So David is saying, join in. He says, not only is it wonderful just to sing praises to the Lord, but it's wonderful when we come together as a group and join in in song. And we can exalt the, and let us exalt his name together. Let, let us lift it up. Let's raise the name of the Lord. And we do it in unison together, all of us singing. Wow, this could get exciting. Taste and see the goodness of prayer, though. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Um, how many times we've read a verse, so even up to this point, that David just stops in the middle of a, of a theme, of a thought, and it just talks about, you know, when I was in trouble, when I was being chased, when Saul wanted to kill me, when I was near death, when I was tired, I sought the Lord, he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were enlightened, or to beam or shine, and their faces were not ashamed. You know, when you start singing and praising the Lord, when you pray and look up, there's, there's light, there's joy. This poor man, David speaking of himself, cried, called out, called out loudly, actually, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his distresses and all his troubles. Taste and see the goodness of God's protection. The, now the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear, have reverence. Uh, angel always in the Bible means messenger, sent ones from God. And in times of distress and hardship, in times we need delivered, in times of fear, God, go to the Lord, rejoice in the Lord, pray to the Lord, and understand he will send his angel to help, or angels. Taste and see the goodness of participation. Here's that verse I wanted you to memorize. So we look into it a little bit deeper. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. How simple this is. What a great salvation message, but what a great Christian living message too. Taste just doesn't mean like to bite into an apple, but that's the picture that is being displayed here by David, that he takes, he takes our senses of our mouth. Remember, our mouth is rejoicing and singing and praising God. Our mouth is speaking prayer to the Lord. 
and our mouth eats. So our mouth is heavily involved in walking in our worship of the Lord and our service of the Lord. And in this case, it's good to have a big mouth in the right way, sharing Jesus Christ. Now, he appeals to us through food, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just like we, uh, I immediately think of, a, of an apple fritter that's really just sort of well done and is heaped sugar all over it. And the edges are crunchy. They, you bite into them, they crunch, and you chew them, they crunch a little longer. That, uh, have, I, have I whetted your appetite for an apple fritter or ice cream? Or you have a favorite candy and you're thinking of that one right now. Um, when we taste that, that's good because we, we get enjoyment, we get, a bless, we get a blessing. And you know, usually snack foods, foods are called today in our society as comfort foods, foods. When we're down, we're discouraged, we eat. But what do we eat? Not usually good things for us. We eat a comfort food that tastes delicious. So understand this when you're down and out. The Lord is the one to go to. Blessed, happy is the man that trusts, flees to him for refuge. Then look at the preference that, that we have to the Lord, that the Lord is our preference in a lot of verses as we work our way through uh, this psalm. Oh, fear the Lord, you saints or holy ones, for there is no poverty or need in them that fear him. The young lions do lack, talking about young men actually, not yet married and out in the workplace and having families, but they lack and they suffer hungry, hunger because they don't have a job. They are dependent upon dad um, and work that would go on and that they just don't have a way to take care of themselves. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any, any good thing. And see the reference again back to tasting and, and going to the Lord and talking about hunger. See verse 8. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Uh, he's actually saying, come walk with me. Come walk with me and listen and do what I tell you. And put my teaching to exercise. Put it into work. Make it work. What man is he that desires life and loves many days that he may say good? What, what man or woman is there that when they live, they, they desire a good life and, and that they get up and love the day that they're facing and they see good? Keep your tongue, once again, something in our mouth. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile or deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and Pursue it. Go after with a passion is what the Hebrew says. Go after goodness. Go after peace and pursue it with a passion. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth or the memorial of them from the earth. Look at all these verses that, that the Lord goes to bat for us in our life. Tough times. The Lord, the Lord knows when we go to him. And he's not only got our back, but he's got our path in front of us. The righteous cry, the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles or distresses. The Lord is nigh or near unto them, that are of a broken, actually shattered heart, the piece, a heart in pieces, and save such as be of a contrite spirit. And so when the, something that's just shattered and broken, it just drops down on the ground in it. Uh, in, in the Bible, uh, they have dirt floors and the heart would be shattered and be down in the dust. And the Lord is the one that can put the heart back together and there is a similarity here as our heart is broken, then our spirit, our, we ourselves need to have a contrite heart and a contrite spirit, a humble spirit before the Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. All right, so 
Very important verse as we get towards the end here. We live a life and we have many afflictions. Uh, afflictions, I do know in the Greek in the New Testament is the same thing as persecution, trials, temptations, troubles. All those words are the same Greek word. And it's afflictions that we have. We go, life, we, we go through our, our Christian walk and our Christian life. Or if you don't know the Lord, there's a lot of afflictions and trials and perils and troubles. But, you know, when we go to the Lord, the Lord shows us a way out. Sometimes the way out is that he walks with us through them. Sometimes he gives us victory up and over them or around them. But usually the Lord walks through us, through with, through the trouble with us. And we go with him and he works that out. He keeps, guards all his bones, not just a broken heart, but all of our, the, our structure, our, it's, the bones are the, the framework of the body. And so it's representative here, the, the Lord just talking about a broken heart, he talks about the entire man or the entire woman, the entire aspect of us. And it says he keeps our bones and not one of them is broken. He guards them so that we are not totally destroyed. Evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. And finally, taste and see the goodness of just pardon. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Been talking a lot about, about mouth things and face things come in, eyes and lips and God hearing ears. A lot of things on our head that God deals with. And our spirituality is, is often dependent upon what we say, how, what's coming out of our mouth, how we are, because that comes out of our heart. And so the word trust has also showed up. And very important that as a child of God, we walk with God and we trust him. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you don't know that kind of walk, you need to trust him as your Savior first, not as the Lord who is delivering you day from day to day issues and are with you, you need the Lord with you. And the way to, to get the Lord with you is to pray and receive him as your personal savior. As the one that you are a sinner and you confess that, that as a sinner, there is no forgiveness except through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and receiving God's free gift of eternal life through him. Think on those things and may God bless you if I can help in any way. This is where you can find me. Email me. I'll be glad to send you a hard copy of this lesson. Uh, these are taught in Sunday school. And um, if they can be of help, if I can, God bless you. Father, thank you for your word, for encouragement from a man, from a king that just walk the normal life like we do have the same problems. Pray that you'd bless your word to us today. In Jesus' name, amen.